are you, yes you, looking for a Robovac right now that's more than just a large hockey puck on wheels? I mean, do you want something truly unique, brimming with the latest tech to blow your tax refund on? Well, getting your house clean, of course. Because if you are, then what you're about to see right now just might do it. This, my friends, is the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra. Let me be straight with you though, this top of the line robot vacuum doesn't come cheap. But I'm also going to make an audacious statement here. If you had to buy just one smart cleaning device for the next year or three, the S7 Max V Ultra should be at or near the top of your list. Roborock sent me this unit to test a few months ago and test it I did and so I've condensed all the things that I like and dislike in this video. So let's check it out after these messages that way. <laughs> Starting with the specs, price is $860 for the S7 Max-V vacuum alone, with a charging dock of course. If you bump it up to $1,160 for the Plus model, you get the auto empty dust dock, or $1,400 for the Ultra, what you see right here with an auto cleaning water and dust dock. And I apologize if you can't see the whole thing, this thing is just massive. Now, this robot itself finds its way around mainly with a combination of LiDAR at the top, structured light 3D scanner and RGB cameras at the front here. And there's also Roborock's reactive AI 2.0 obstacle and hazard avoidance, and I'll talk more about that later. There's 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connectivity here only with voice assistant control. There's no five gigs for what it's worth. Now, suction is at the top end at 5100 pascals. As for the dock, we have a dustbin and a dust bag, sure, but that's so yesterday because here we also have clean water and dirty water tanks as well for mopping if that's your kind of gem. The vacuum can a quick map with storage for up to four maps. At the back here, we'll look at this closer in a second, there's a wet vibrating mop with automatic mop lifting when transitioning from carpet to smooth surfaces. Now, battery life can vary depending on how much your floor is carpeted or not, the floor plan, and of course, the size of the rooms. But for example, for the lower floor of my house of 700 square feet, of which 35% is carpeted or rugged, that adds up to about 80 plus minutes of cleaning time, three mop wash cycles, one at the beginning, one in the middle, one at the end. The battery life is taken down to 50% from a full charge. That's not bad at all. Looking closer at the vacuum, the height is 10.2 centimeters from the top of the LiDAR dome to wheels at full compression, and the width is 34.3 centimeters. So, what that translates to is the S7 can fit under and between most furniture. The weight is 3.6 kilograms just for the vacuum alone. Thank goodness the dock stays put in one location because between all the tanks and all, this would have been otherwise a beast to lug around. Over on the side right here, you can see the independent articulating rubber threaded wheels. Um, they have 2.5 centimeters of travel, perfect for tall thresholds as well as carpet transitions. And also on the side here, we have the single side brush. And just like the wheels, the bristles here are made of soft PU. I usually find them uh, find these kind of brushes are hard, but this case is really nice and soft and it's not meant to scratch your floors. And I also found, maybe this is just me, uh, maybe this has static or something that attracts dirt much better to send it to the center brush. And speaking of the center brush, this thing sits on a floating assembly to better adjust to the angulation of your floors. Here you can see the mopping pad, adjust, it's removable as well as washable. And earlier we mentioned all the sensors and cameras. This thing is loaded, guys. The cameras all here, there's even a headlight that comes on in dark areas to illuminate, you know, the cameras, help illuminate the cameras. And all the collision sensors, even the bumper is right here, it's nice and large LiDAR, a dome right there, we saw that earlier. And the fall sensors at the bottom that prevent this from going over steps. Charging contact is right there, front roller is right here. And on the back here, you can see the uh, venting ports. One of the fans is right here and also the speaker. I can't tell, remember which side is which. And let me put this on its bottom to show you the water tank. It pops out from the back right here and it's 200 milliliters for what it's worth. And if you flip open the lid right here, you have access to the dustbin if you want to manually uh, clean it out or wash the filter. At the top, we have three buttons, the spot cleaning, power, as well as home or dock buttons, three LED status lights. And here, this thing is pretty well built, but it, I wish there was more colors, yeah, to be honest. And these splashes of racing red and car fake carbon fiber, 
Yeah, they turned me off. I'm not sure why they did that. Moving over to the dock, and this thing is a complicated device. It's not small. You definitely need to plan ahead where you want to put it. And again, just like the vacuum, I wish this came in other colorways to better match your interior. But anyways, I removed the cover to the dustbin or the dust bag so you can better see it. And here's the clean water tank. I've removed that so you can better see the cavity as well. Both the dirty water tank as well as clean water tank, really easy to maintain and clean. The rubber lined, uh, rubber sealed a lid so they don't leak and they have handles so you can tote them around anywhere and anytime. And the capacity is pretty impressive too. I've used this for two months and this thing is about halfway point. Very impressive stuff. A little PSA, some reviewers have said that the dirty, dirty water tank gets stinky after a while. If you add a little bit of uh, recommended detergent in here, it won't smell as much. It really uh, makes a huge difference. Now, the dust bag is a little bit on the small side, but if you clean your home and moderately dirty twice a week, um, this should last you about three months. Pretty impressive stuff. But I heard Robo Rock is coming out with a washable bag as well, which would be super welcome. Now, here's a track for the vacuum to back up on. And you can see right here, this is the cleaning brush that runs on the track to clean the mopping pad. So when the vacuum decides it needs cleaning, it'll park itself and back up here and it'll clean it. When it needs to empty the vacuum or the dust bag, it'll turn around and this is where it empties itself. This is the output port right there. And I'm not sure if you can see this reflective area right here. Make sure this is clean and unobstructed because this is meant for the sensors on the vacuum to find its way and center itself back into the dock. The Roborock app can get quite complex, I'll tell you right off the bat. I suggest getting familiar with it in order to get the most out of your S7. So here is the home screen. The map is awesome. It comes in either 2D or 3D flavors. Once I switch over, you can do this and check that out. And let's switch this back. And as the robot scans and also cleans your home, it will tell and also show you. Let me zoom in and show you what I mean. It will tell and show you obstacles it finds. Like say right here, it says, oh, look, I found a shoe. And then you can choose for future reference whether you want to keep it or tell the S7 to ignore. Um, I'll talk more about this later, but the obstacle IDing on this thing is quite uncanny, yet not overly aggressive at the same time. Knowing how to differentiate between things to avoid versus cleanable areas. The basic controls on the home screen, like clean and docked at the bottom, really easy to figure out. And just right above that, you can tell the S7 whether you want to, like, say, vacuum alone or just mop or both vacuum and mop. And I'm not sure if you can hear the dinging in the background. That's the mop acknowledging that I'm changing modes here and there. And then you can change the intensity of each uh, mode that you like. And these tabs between full room and zone, you can uh, give you the opportunity to uh, clean by specific rooms or zones you highlight on the map. The camera icon on the right side here is to me the fun button. If you tap that, you can basically ride along with the S7 as it cleans to see what it's doing or tell it to go check on or even call your pets or kids because, you know, this has an intercom for crying out loud. And in case you're wondering, for privacy and security purposes, this device and also the app do not store any videos. And I'm not sure if you're hearing this in the background, the machine announces that the camera is on at regular intervals. And on top of that, you have to give the app permission each time uh, with an unlock pattern to use the video function. Now, the settings section accessible from the top right here is where things can get overwhelming for some, but at least pretty much everything is well-defined and labeled. For example, you can set things like, let me show you this, how often or intense the mop washing, or here, how often or intense the auto emptying for the vacuuming is, or the various parameters for the AI or obstacle avoidance. This thing is all well spelled out and easy enough to understand. You just have to dig in. Towards the bottom here, you have schedules, and it's pretty robust, where you can set up the start time, whatever days you want to have it run, as well as the strength of whatever clean mode you're using, vacuum or mopping. And then you can tell the S7 whether you want to clean the whole house or define one room that you prefer. Now, towards the bottom of the settings as well as maintenance, this is a good screen where it gives you an idea when to clean or service different parts of the machine. And by the way, little PSA here just for you using these app, uh, this app for the first time. If you have an ad blocker app on your phone, turn it off. Or better yet, add the Roborock app to your whitelist. Otherwise, pairing the vacuum won't work. Smart, self-guided, self-charging Robovacs are one thing, but to have one that you can just leave to do its own thing for a few weeks on end is more of a life changer than I personally expected. 
you essentially set it up the way you want to. You map out the house, set up the boundaries if needed, set up a schedule, and then just fire and forget. For a few weeks anyway, because you know, someone still got to dump out the dirty water and empty out the dust bag. Such a plebeian task. The S7 Ultra would have been one expensive piece of plastic if it couldn't clean well to begin with, right? So thank goodness it has the cleaning versatility and chops guys to make you worry less and give you more time to focus on, I don't know, refining your cooking skills or take up karate classes or just sit around doing nothing because you've earned it, dang it. But anyways, as we saw earlier, the S7 vacuums really well on flat surfaces and is good on low pile carpets. The mop also is better than most of its kind because of the agitation mechanism and its pretty effective self-cleaning ability as well. The obstacle avoidance on this thing is the bejizzle, yo. Like shoes, poop, cables, toys, the AI is smart enough to identify and avoid them all. It's really hard to trick this thing up, unless like in low light situations when the headlight doesn't kick in in time. The video camera function is admittedly a cheap party trick, but I personally enjoy it. It's so cool to ride along with your vacuum as it shows you parts of the house you rarely ever see, especially at so close to floor level. Because like suddenly the bottom of your couch is a dark undiscovered cave or your thick carpet is like a forest or something. I'm putting the app in the neutral territory because here's the thing, for the price, it would have been nice to have an app that has two modes, basic and advanced. Basic could allow owners who aren't as tech savvy or have the time to dig around in the app to access basic functions to tune their vacuum to their preference, like quick mapping or obstacle avoidance sensitivity and the like. Or even if Roborock couldn't do it, a wizard would have been nice to like walk you through each step when you power this thing on for the first time to set things up. That would have been awesome. I love the app. It's powerful and it looks really good, but I can see it being too daunting for some. Ultimately, and this is a no-brainer, I and mean, if you're not thinking this, you probably should readjust your mindset, this is an auxiliary cleaning device. It doesn't completely replace hands-on cleaning, guys. It can't clean right angle corners for one in tight spaces or in those little nooks and crannies. You know, things that still require human finesse or the little human touch. Vibration mopping is fine on this thing. It's a step forward in mopping pad tech, that's for sure. But when met with things like cooking oil splatter or sugar from ketchup, as I mentioned earlier, you need warm water and a more thorough scrub as well, which the S7 and pretty much admittedly any other robot vacuum can't do just yet. Roborock, can we add more color options for this, like white or silver, or better yet, primary colors, so that we can complement our interior decor? 
And since we're talking about looks here, I'm not that big of a fan of this whole fake carbon fiber, red racing stripes all around it, because it's not like I'm planning on racing this with my neighbors anytime soon, right? Now that would be an interesting idea though, a robot vacuum racing league. Yes, let's get it done guys. And also as a side note, I think the dock kind of looks like the inside of an inkjet printer, right? Like a, with the cartridges and the printer head and everything. Don't you think so? Or is that just me? It's just me, isn't it? It's a shame that with all the tech and the sensors built into this, that there's no dustbin sensor on the vacuum itself. Or at least Roborock could have given us the option in the app to activate the ability to empty the dustbin whenever the S7 comes back to the dock to clear its water tank. And oh yes, if I remember correctly, the Ultra is more expensive than the entire Apollo program. But then again, on the flip side, it probably also has more computing power than all the landers, rockets, and mission control centers combined. Loaded to the gills with automatic this and intelligent that, the S7 Max V Ultra is expensive and not the prettiest, but if you do end up owning one, it's almost like having a maid all for yourself. While the size and especially the price are the biggest roadblocks here, I'm blown away by the top-notch obstacle avoidance, the app, the pretty good cleaning quality, and the biggest one of all, the fact that you don't have to mess with the dustbin or change out the water after every single use. So with all that said, I'm gonna be giving the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra a gear of score of 8.3 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get a final score. If you have any questions about it, feel free to comment down below. Well, thank you so much for being here and for watching this. And if you found this video the least bit interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel to show your support. I'm this close to 15,000. If you can get me there, that'll be super awesome. And don't forget to share this with your friends and family about Gear Up and about this random Asian guy who makes tech videos for a living on YouTube. And if you want to, you can visit my Patreon page down here too if you'd like to financially support this channel to help me get you some of the latest stuff to review. And remember to thumbs up if you like this video and comment nicely down below too. That's super important stuff. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? The world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. Keep praying for the Ukrainians. I love you guys very much and I'll see you the next time. Peace out.